Another explosion rocks Imo State as an oil refinery goes up in flames. And Igbo groups warn that any attempt to deny Southeast presidency will spell doom for Nigeria. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakon. The Imo State Police Command has confirmed that there was a bomb blast at a flow station in the oil producing community of Izombe in Oguta, local government area of the state. The incident was a suspected bomb attack on the oil facility. It was reported that the victims were the carriers of bombs which exploded when they were trying to enter the oil facility. This incident comes 12 days after several persons were feared killed when an explosion rocked the, an illegal crude oil refinery in the state. Well, joining us to discuss this is public policy analyst Dr. Law Mefo and uh, a political analyst Charles Otu. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Yeah, good evening. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mefo. Um, let's start by asking the question that is on everybody's mind. What exactly is going on in Imo State? We've seen um, it's from one mishap to the other. We've seen people killing their own. We've even heard reports of a soldier that was killed. I mean, it just it's, if it's not one thing, it's the other. And it leaves us with that question. So do you have an idea of what exactly is going on in Imo State? Yeah, well, uh, I think uh, one uh, can only try to uh, sort of uh, put uh, together the bits and pieces and make some sense out of it. Um, there is no doubt that um, the governor of uh, Imo State um, is not having it easy with um, some non-state uh, actor groups. There and they, they have been on war path for some time now. And um, um, if you check what has happened in a, um, a low part of uh, Imo State for about a year now, um, you can see that that is uh, what um, I want to believe is escalating and uh, assuming a, a more frightful uh, dimensions. And um, in all that, uh, all I see, as far well as uh, my senses can carry me, is um, a, a, a face off, a, a battle between uh, the non state actors and uh, the state actors there in uh, Imo State. And um, uh, they, they have, uh, both sides have exchanged um, um, words uh, and uh, threats, and um, each has uh, tried to make a good. Uh, the threat. And uh, the um, most uh, recent dimension being added now is uh, this uh, bomb explosion, and um, which uh, one may still uh, have to uh, put uh, as a part of uh, what is uh, already going on. I, I, and I think um, it is quite a, it, it's quite a sad or bad because uh, bombing of uh, oil facilities in Imo State. Um, has not been a part of uh, the problem. So it's certainly a new one. So for me, I think it's uh, the mishandling of uh, the um, security situation in Nemo State that has led to the escalation of it. Mm. I do not think that uh, over-reliance on a kinetic approach to solving the insecurity in Nemo State is uh, sufficient, adequate, or even advisable. I, I, you know, for me, I will always maintain a healthy and t delicate balance between a, a kinetic and non-kinetic approaches in resolving uh, the security situation you find anywhere, not just in Imo State, anywhere at all. You, you don't just use force alone. There should be uh, there should be uh, a, a, some ways of um, um, you know using back channels to. Uh, deal with some of these things, we don't need to really know what uh, was done. What we want is relative peace so that people can go about their normal business. 
Okay, I, I, like the, I like the fact that you're looking at strategies to bring some form of relative peace, but let's go to the root cause of the problem because this is, where, this is why questions are begging to be answered. Um, before now, Imo State was not known to be this hotbed that it has become overnight. Um, and and for, for somebody who's from the southeast, and, and in a, a situation where we are building up to an election, also in a climate where the southeast is canvassing for um, you know, an opportunity at the presidential seat, why do you think that Imo State is even facing this level of insecurity in the first instance? Is that question for me? Yes. Yes, you say why uh, um how did it start? Because into, yes. Why must it got into the security insecurity situation he has found itself? Yes. I got into it in the first place. Yes. Yes, uh, and that's what I said. I, I think uh, the 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 over reliance on um uh, you know, kinetic, kinetic approach. What I mean by kinetic approach is the use of force. You know, using force to uh, try to obliterate, you know, the non-state uh, actors and their activities. That's, that's one level of it. And again, even before the face-off and uh, the actual confrontation between uh, the government of Imo State and the, the, the security um, Apartheid in the state, and then the non-state actors. You find the, the uh, uh, IPOB. You find the Plan Security Network, and now the non-government, you know, has also joined uh, the mix. And then uh, you, you see, camps are known to have been established in Imo State, in Anambra State, who are all around uh, the southeast, and indeed in many parts of Nigeria. You know, the, if you ask why, how did he get into this uh, level of insecurity? It's because the government, government security forces didn't act preemptively. They didn't act when they should. They were there when non-state actors established camps in the forest. They established camps. They were training, arming themselves. They were able to grow to the point that they were able to confront the state uh, actors and the state structures. Mm. So if they cannot be blameless in peace, if they need it in the board, they wouldn't have been able to organize themselves, train themselves, build physical camps, arm themselves, and are now emboldened to the point that they can confront the army, the police, and everybody else. So he, he, he saying, and then the governor himself, he, he has uh, not uh, really uh, tried uh, out uh, any aspect of peace. He's relying essentially on a, on a, um, arrest and kill and all that. And then the other side is fighting back. It may probably to stay alive or to get even because any, any of their members killed, they try to get even. And of course, if they get even on the other side, if you kill a policeman or, the, or a soldier, you don't expect the Nigerian military to keep quiet. Mm. You don't expect the police to keep quiet. So it, it has become a vicious cycle of, the, of, of, of violence. You know, violence is, is perpetrated by uh, the inability of the state to really read and interpret the uh, goings on in a uh, emo state and indeed in a other, other parts of the southeast. Because okay. Anambra state is almost as, uh, yeah. as hot as emo state as we speak. Yes. You know, so it's not just a matter of um, a matter of Imo State alone. What is happening in Imo is because that is the one that drew your attention. Some mm -hmm. you know, very serious uh, insecurity challenges have also sprung up in um, Anambra State and in other places. What, what so what I'm saying is, the state, the state um, security system, the state security apparatus, what where we are today. Where these non-state actors were setting up their shops, when they were setting up their camps, training and arming themselves, they didn't do their job. Okay. Now we have entered what you call damage control. Okay. But we are here facing it. We just have to confront it and deal with it. And to succeed, you need to use back channels. You need to combine kinetic and non-kinetic. Kinetic is use of force, which is already in place. But non-kinetic, 
is using a carrot, you know, um, peace okay. overtures, negotiations. You don't need to do it in the open. Okay. In some of these things are done using back channels. What you want is results. Okay. And that is the only thing that concerns and that will make sense to the citizens. They let don't care how you achieve that result. Let me, let me go to Charles. Charles, can you hear me? It's, it's interesting how the, the lawyer has um, described the situation uh, in the Emo state. And of course, he's talked about other parts of the Southeast. But let me ask you, do you think that there is a political aspect to the um, insecurity and the uprising, not just in Imo State, but of course in Anambra and, and, and the pockets of violence that the South East is facing today? Yeah, th thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> the, re echoing what my co guests have said, um, the security situation or the insecurity in Imo State is, uh, is, uh, has a serious political dimension. I said this because I knew that um, uh, the circumstances which the governor emerged, that is the governor who puts mm -hmm. uh, was such that was spectacular that he needed more wisdom. Like he analyzed the use of kinetic force on the on, on the on the, uh, uh, the the people behind or suspected to be behind the insecurity uh, will at a long in a long time not achieve the desired result. And that is what is playing out. And I think there was enough caution to that effect that you must do more of dialoguing, you must do more of engaging, because there are a combination of forces, like he pointed out, we started with threats from IPOB, from there to now you have the issue of unknown government. Uh, Mr. Tu, can you hear me? I think uh, we lost uh, that connection with uh, Mr. Tu. But let me come back to you, Mr. Mefo. Um, so. If we're all saying that this has some um, ties to the governor, and you're saying that maybe there has to be back channels and dialoguing, why is it so difficult for the state governor to have this conversation, or probably ask what these people want? Because I'm guessing, even the guys who are causing mayhem in the northeast, Boko Haram at some point, had a cause. Um, although we do not know what the bandits want, but if there is room for a conversation to be had, why is it taking so long for these conversations to be had? How many lives have to be lost for this conversation to be had? Yeah, um, the, the, um, see, the, I believe that, um, the, like I tried to establish earlier, when uh, the face off started, um, you have a reliance on the non-kinetics. That is very, very important. But uh, I believe that uh, uh, both uh, sides uh, have uh, made their point, and um, it is time to try other methods. We don't, you know, more people do not need to die. And um, I also uh, want to believe that... Um, IPOB, um, uh, Eastern Security Network, uh, themselves also want peace. And um, I want to see what they are doing as um, a battle for survival. They, they, they want to stay alive. And um, I'm, cu I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Longer. I'm curious as to what battle to stay alive would mean killing other people. Because I remember at, at the beginning of all of this, when the federal government and security agencies pointed fingers at IPOB and ESN, they came out clearly to say they were not responsible for this. But now down the line, we're seeing that the, the writing on the wall is that they are mostly behind some of these killings, reportedly. Yeah, well, 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 so so, so say, again, um, what kind of cause would they be fighting for if it means them killing their own brothers and sisters to make a point? What point are well, they trying to make? The, the, the issue is deeper than uh, uh, you are looking at it. Um, from all indications, uh, IPOB has a faction. And um, you hear Simon Epa giving counter order from um, Finland. And then uh, Emma Powerful speaking for uh, the a, a, a broad based IPOB, countering him. You know, that tells you that. Um, even when a, uh, a, a, side, a part of IPOB says they are not responsible, the other part, they be responsible. 
And um, in other words, you may make peace with one side that wants peace, and the other side is going on. For example, the issue of uh, sit at home every Monday it has been uh, uh, countered, uh, in fact, uh, suspended by one arm of the IPO. But the other arm, led by Simon Oepa, is in city on sit at home. So that tells you that the IPO brain you know, has uh, two factions. We, we, we just have to face a, a reality there. So um, talking with one side may not be enough. It's just like uh, what, what uh, happened in the case of uh, Boko Haram. When uh, Shekau was around, uh, I, at a point, uh, Boko Haram broke into two, and Abawani was leading a faction. So and then Abawani was uh, more disposed to uh, discussions and negotiations and stuff. But Shekau never wanted that. You know, so if you have the, if you have a similar thing happening with the IPOB and ESN, you, you really have a big problem on your hands. So government will have to uh, reach out, uh, you know, and um, courageously confront what is going on. I still believe the situation is favorable, and um, uh, if uh, Biafra is what they want. They need to be alive to, to, to get the Biafra. And uh, you can do Biafra agitation without uh, adding arms to it. Mm -hmm. This has always been my, my position. Okay. And uh, I also believe that what is fueling, providing oxygen for Biafra agitation is the uh, exclusion of uh, the South, is the marginalization, has actually led to uh, too many youths being stranded and questioning the relevance of the Nigerian nation state. To their own survivor. Mm. So if you if you um, look at it, you know um, if you, if you, if you look at it, you will discover that, um, uh, that there is no way you can um, you, you can um, uh, begin on this path. Today I read that um, you, you know even Britain is trying to uh, disallow any person that has anything to do with them. Uh, with Africa from entering uh, Britain. That's a big uh, problem. And then uh, it can escalate to the whole uh, um, EU, e European Union. And uh, that becomes a problem to um, Nigerians of South East Extraction because uh, our names will always give us out that you are okay, Chukwu, you are Chukwu, they all that. So when they see those names, they know you are from uh, that side. So, if we are all tied with the same brush as um, as uh, Biafra agitators, members of IPOP, and therefore terrorists, you can see that uh, it's going to be quite uh, tragic. So everything has to be done to okay. um, begin okay. to de-escalate what is going on at the moment. It is still possible. I still see some windows. Okay. Then there is also a, another emerging trend. You know, um, those who are in the mainstream of the uh, IPOB and the Afro agitation groups in leadership, you know, it, it may be peaceful, may want um, things to be orderly and so on and so forth. But there are, there are criminal elements that have actually uh, taken a part of uh, the struggle. And, uh, but I always, using I always, it as, I always um, ask that question when, I mean, let's take, for example, when we were having the killer herders. Um, and and uh, Mieti Ala kept saying, well, it wasn't us. I always ask, you can tell who your members are, and you can also tell who your members are not. So what do you do to make sure that you fish out this bad eggs? Because, of course, there are always opportunists in the midst of every kind of agitation. What are the members of the other side of the IPOB or ESN who say that they're for a good cause? What are they doing to put an end to the other side, which is bad? Because it, this cannot be left for government alone, or even the innocent people who are not armed. So how do you handle that? It, it's going to be tough, because um, only, only a madman can, um, can confront uh, a man with a gun. You know, so if you are dealing with um, a part of, uh, uh, of uh, the group that is armed, Dealing with them becomes very, very delicate. So even those who are Biafra agitators, who do not believe in the uh, use of arms or violence, cannot even speak out openly against them because their life is also at stake. Mm. So a lot of problems are now confronting uh, the Southeast, not just uh, or even state alone. 
and uh, all hands will have to be on deck. I need to see more action from the religious leaders, the bishops. I want to see more action from Mohanese. I want to see more action from the uh, for the Southeast governor. The Southeast governors have not shown any commitment mm. to resolving the problem that is going on okay, in, I, uh, the, in the Southeast. They Dr. have not Dr. done Mepo, anything. I'm, I'm sorry to cut you. Brand. I'm sorry to cut you. I think we have um, Charles or two back. So let let me just quickly, um, you know, go in his direction. Uh, Mr. Tu, if you can hear me, um, let's look at the political angle uh, uh, to this particular um, situation. Uh, like I said before, you, we, we lost that connection with you. We're in the thick of campaign season. We're in the thick of picking who would run for different political parties. There are zones who are agitating uh, that, you know, the ticket come to them. What does this whole agitation... I had a conversation yesterday, and I, I want to quickly play that audio. Uh, I had a conversation with uh, somebody from the North, a political, um, a political um, analyst. Uh, his name is Musa Idris. And he clearly stated that the Southeast is not ready to field any candidate. And he made mention of the fact that, look at what is happening in the Southeast. It's not possible for you to have a candidate. And he also said that the Southeast is not sure what it wants. If it wants Biafra or it wants to stay in Nigeria, but that, that the onus lies on the Southeastness and their leaders of thought. I'd like to hear your reaction to that. Unfortunately, we can't play you that video. Okay, thank you very much. The, the, the situation in Imo State, uh, like I said earlier, is, uh, has remained political. And that is because the governor of the state has not been able to address the core issue which is to drop the use of force to initiate genuine dialogue. It is not easy to dialogue, but we could see that despite all that is happening in Anambra State, Professor Soludo, the new governor of Anambra, has insisted in using so many non-conventional approaches, including the religious leader, international uh, institutions and all that, including youth groups and organizations, to uh, you know, foster peace, to say, look, you have to take back your state. Uh, we don't see that those kind of messages coming. Uh, on the 7th of and 8th of November 2020, I remember I was part of a, a group. Uh, I was part of a training for traditional rulers in Imo State at uh, the Bieri Cultural Center, uh, uh, conducted by one uh, Lambe, uh, Lambeka group. And uh, uh, in that seminar, which I was part of, many uh, individuals, including Catholic priests, were invited, traditional rulers, security experts beyond even the South, to talk to the government and the people on the use of non-conventional approaches to, at, at that time, the security was not this heightened. But it does appear that um, not much has gone on in terms of implementation or the recommendation of that uh, particular security summit in Imo. And uh, the governor uh, being more interested the way I read his body language in uh, politics of 2023, and of course, uh, relying more that the use of force, uh, use of uh, the military and all that could subjugate and bring calmness in the state, uh, it has not helped the situation in Imo State. Now, our fears should center on the fact that, look, these people have left the political class, they have left every other arm, they are now dealing with what is a threat to the national economic survival of Nigeria. They are now dealing with oil facilities. They are now dealing with things that has to do with our survival as a nation. I mean, this, this is a more frightening dimension, especially coming in an election season. It calls for worry, it calls for concern. And my view would be, which is what I've been saying, the Southeast governors led by the governor of Ebony State has to really sit down again to redefine what they uh, established as the Eastern Security Network. The, um, I mean, um, the Ebubago Security Ebube Network. Agu, yes. The Ebubago Security Network was meant to be a regional security outfit like Amotekun. But if we watch the way the different other three governors or four governors of the Southeast has, uh, have been acting or behaving, it does appear that Ebubago has only been operating in Ebony. And that I won't talk about it because what is even doing in Ebony, it is not going after the unknown government, it's only going after political opponents. That is a story for another day. Mm. But 
it is time, like my colleague said, for the Southeast governors, if they are really, if they really want to prove to the people that they can return peace to the Southeast, it is time for them to come together again to redefine the modus and operations of Ibubago. Because it is only in that kind of approach that we can begin to say, okay, where conventional security is failing, where kinetic use of force is failing, we can begin to rely on those who can know and understand better the language of some of these agitators. Okay. It is time for the party's governor to bring together uh, the people that uh, are known, the people that have been penciled down or, you know, uh, profiled at some point to be members of this agitative group. They need to bring them to a table with Johannes Zendigo, traditional class of scientist extraction, and religious leaders to map and ch chart a way forward. Otherwise, going into the 23 elections, more arms has been, you know, are in the hands of people who should not have arms. Mm. And they drop for the Southeast states entirely. Well, I want to say thank you, gentlemen. Unfortunately, uh, time is not our friend. Lord Mefor is... Uh, um, uh, he is a political analyst and uh, he is a public policy analyst also. And uh, Charles Otu is a political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We will revisit this conversation as it develops. We'll take a quick break. Thank you all for staying with us. When we come back, the issues surrounding the Southeast presidency will be on the table right after this. <laughs>